Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to go over some of the very basics of using and writing the HTML for web pages. To start off quickly, I'm using a pre-written file here. The three HTML files here, all three, are blank. The first peculiar thing about this file is its type. I clicked on this thing called index.html. The file's name ends with the dot html extension as we call it the file contains html code to get a copy of the file i can choose save page as in my web browser now the browser i'm using is firefox if you use chrome or microsoft edge or safari or something else the save page as might come under a different name but there will be a way to save the page right clicking and looking in a menu that came up I will choose somewhere sensible to save it. I'll overwrite this. It was me preparing this earlier. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Let's open it. Index.html. If on the system that you're using, you do not see the extension at the end of the file name, there should be an option somewhere to tell the machine to show you those final letters at the end. They are very useful because they indicate what kind of file this is jpeg html plain text txt this one is a powerpoint presentation each type of data that you're holding in a file there will be an extension that corresponds to it in description i'll put a link to an explanation with screenshots about how you can make this extension visible if you're working on a system that doesn't show it to you okay now that we have the file we can actually change its contents and we do this by opening the file in a text editor. Notice that if I double click on the file, because it's an HTML file, it will open in a browser, but I want to change it. So I right click and I open it with a text editor. I can do it here because I have this Notepad++ option in a menu, or else you could use open with and choose something there, or else you could use send to and choose something there. So we should be able to actually open the file with something to edit with. There's Notepad++. I'll make the window a little bit smaller so we can you can see all of it. And in it, the file that was showing a blank page, remember? We'll see in a sec why so. An HTML file is made of tags. This is a tag. An instruction in between open and close uh, chevrons, the less than sign and the more than sign at the keyboard and tags are usually paired up open close you can see one of the advantages of notepad plus plus it actually highlights to you which tag goes with which you see a close html tag at the end of this let's see where its beginning is its match is over there all of this html code is quite easy to type up or it can be quicker to start from a basic page like this one. Now, let's have a look at what this results in and try to understand its content. So I've put them side by side. This is the page and this is the result. You might think, well, uh, why all the effort of typing this code to get absolutely nothing at all? If you look at the tags that are in there, are all tags that produce no visible content. To be able to see something, here, I'll put in some text. We save that. And here we go to the browser's view of the file. Reload that. Oh, good. Just check one more time. I can make a change. I need to remember to save. And then I go here. I press refresh. And I can actually see my changes. It's not automatic because the web browser does not constantly return to the file to see if it has changed. It loads it when we ask for it, and after that, it just stays there until the next time we ask for it. What about the way that the tags written in here? One thing to get used to is the way that those tags are structured. I will use a couple of new lines and things like that to see it better. So it's, we start off with an HTML tag, and then inside that, there starts a section called head which finishes over there and we say that all the tags are what we call nested that is in a tag formed of a pair like this 
there are more tags. For example, head contains title, title opens and closed, and gives a piece of text that is being used to make the title of the page at the top here. Same thing with the body, it starts here, it ends there, and inside is all the body of the page, the things that will appear in all of that space. More tags, opening and closing, and overall it forms what we sometimes call a tree structure. You see the tree structure very nicely if you collapse some parts of that structure in Notepad++. I've got an HTML tag opening and closing and inside it a head and a body. Inside the head, let's reopen it, I have some meta tags, we'll return to that, and a title. Inside the body, I have several divisions. Let's see, two of them. The first one apparently intended for headings and the second one intended for, whoop, it says it's a container which has in it some navigation and some other HTML code. This here is the comment. It's a tag that is intended not for the person who is looking at the web page, but for the person that is editing it, creating it, making it. So comments are very, very useful if you are working collectively and even as a note to yourself. So if you are writing quite a lot of web pages in a site, then the comment is a very, very good reminder and an easy way to find again certain parts of your work. Have I made it clear enough that if you are creating web pages, it's a very good idea to use that comment, those comment signs. The div tag doesn't do very much other than subdivide the page, but it's useful as a way of marking off certain sections. Like for example, if you start your page with headings, here we'll use a heading, h1, and we'll end it here. will place the headings in that top part. If I put in some links, A, we used to call links the anchors in a web page because it anchors a page to another and I place them in that section that has been named nav because it looks like that's what was intended. And finally, if I want to add some images or written text, written copy to my code, I would do it in this third div, start paragraph. This is a paragraph. Or I could put an image. We'll see what more goes inside this tag. Before the detail of what goes inside this tag, if you accidentally cross tags over, like uh, this, And let's use another tag, I. If you cross tags over, the system is still able to cope with it, but it does so by guessing how this should be organized and mm, uncrossing them. If I save this and show you how this looks, B stands for bold and I for italics, the machine has given us the result that we expected. But a good deal of the time when you cross tags over like this, you see here a tag begins and ends there and the other one crosses it, beginning 
an ending there. The computer can misinterpret what you mean. So use the structure of the tags, how they open and close, to structure your own work. In this little example, you would do this. Finish the bold at this point, start both bold and italics like this, so that each time a set of tags is inside another. That would give us the same result, but we are surer of our structure. And to see clearly what is being written, I can put it like this. A very good example of structuring the tags and exploiting the structure of the tags to get things right is in tables, because tables are made of a table tag, then within a row tag, then within the row tag, cell tags, to subdivide your, your work, marking off where the table begins and ends, then where each row begins and ends, then within that where each cell begins and ends in the row. So use the, the tree structure of tags to work your way through your web page. I'll show you one more place where we can see the tree structure of tags, but before we do that, we'll clean up the image and also in that nav section, the anchor there, starting with the anchor because that is easier. It says click here, but it doesn't have anywhere to go to when we click. So a link needs the a tag and then we need to say something like this, H-R-E-F, it stands for hypertext reference. And in quotes, we put in the address of the page that we want to go to. For example, HTTP colon slash slash shoe AC UK. So now save, reload, the link is looking blue. And when I click on it, it takes me to the page. Step back. Same thing with the images where we can actually indicate the source of the image. A very pretty horse with a couple of folds. Image1.jpg. Because this tag does not have a slash image tag afterwards, does not have a closing tag, we put an extra bar like this at the end, and the tag is, we say it is self-closing. Save that. Let's take a look. A link is okay, the paragraph, yeah, the image is okay, and we've got this build, B stands for bold and I for italics, lovely. I said there was one more place where we can actually use the tree structure of our web page. If I go here, there are plenty of tools intended for the developers' websites. Firefox has them here. But again, if you are using Chrome or Safari or Edge, you'll find the tools exist just in a slightly different place in the menus. Tools intended for writing the page, trying to find out what it's made of. Web developer, inspector. Right, look, when I inspect the web page, it shows me the structure of the page, again in this format of a tree. We can't see very much of the page, can we? Okay, let's have a look at, uh, let's enlarge this a bit. Right, there's my page. And next to that, there's my code. And now I can move here. So this is all of the HTML. Within that, this is the body. Within the body, there's this section called I, ha, ah, and B. Then above that, there is a div. The div is all of this. And in that div, there's the section with the content. And before that, the section of the navigation. Finally, there's a container, and above the container, there's a set of headings. And we're back to opening the body. But you can see the little arrows to the side, and I can open and shut different section of my page so that I can see each section of the page, what it's made of, and what each tag corresponds to 
on the screen. So that is one way if you are finding you have a web page that does something confusing to actually work out exactly what is going on. And that uses the tree structure. Let me show you what happens if I cross tags over like I was doing at the beginning. Here, let's remove this and let's decide we found this was too complicated. So I start the bold here and then I start the italics. I don't need to start bold again. So the tags cross over, save, refresh. And let's see how the computer has understood it. Bold slash bold within which italics and and then some more italics have, are, are there afterwards so we have cross tags over but the way that the system has understood it in what we call its dom tree in its document object model in the object it has in memory about how the document is organized mm -hmm. it has uncrossed and tags and sometimes when we get them crossed over, it will interpret them in a way that gives the same result that we intended, but sometimes it will mess it up. So the best is respect the, the nesting structure. Finally, I'm going to show you another place where we can you can check that the HTML you're writing is actually correctly written and you can get information about anything that might be mistaken. The overseeing body that organizes the web languages, uh, HTML and others, is called the World Wide Web Consortium. The World Wide Web Consortium was set up by Tim Berners-Lee when he invented the World Wide Web. And as part of the work he did, he basically, instead of patent and develop his own company with the ideas of the World Wide Web, he made it public uh, and, and he went on to develop this organization called the World Wide Web Consortium. Tim Berners-Lee was at the head of the World Wide Web Consortium for a long time. W3C Validator. Right, and I can give an, an address or else I can upload my file or even just type things up in there. I think I'll do that. I'll copy and paste my HTML. And I press check and the machine will tell us if there is anything that is not done according to the standards, there's an error. Must not include both a meta element with it and a... Okay, so in that case, so the rules of the W3C are that we don't need both this and this. I did it anyway, and we'll say that we remove the car set, but keep the content type. Oh, I'll have to change it here as well. Remove the cal set, but keep the content type. Image must have an alt attribute. Images have this attribute, ALT, so that we can put some alternative for screen readers, or obviously, for example, people who are blind, or if you're trying to save bandwidth, then because of that, you're not loading all images in your browser. Aha, the end tag B violates nesting rules. Remember that one? Let's do it properly again. And B, start I, start B. There, let's save all this and check our validator once more. Okay, this time it passes. No errors or warnings. This code follows the expected HTML standards. Is it very important to respect the standards completely? There are reasons to do it, and strangely, there are reasons not to. Reasons to do it. Suppose that you're trying to work through your web page and you put it through a checker like this and the checker tells you you have 49 errors and out of the 49, you look at it and 48 of the er errors were things that you knew were not exactly standard but you were leaving it anyway because uh, you knew it wasn't important. You're left trolling through detail because of some problem you're trying to sort out. 
and the checker cannot actually support you that well because it's finding plenty of other of other props. The other uh, reason to use checkers like this or to keep using checkers like this is browsers can display much better, much quicker pages that respect the standards. They are written first according to the standards of the World Wide Consortium. And then plenty of extra code is written so that they can will display the web page correctly even if you don't respect the World Wide Web Consortium. But that slows the browser down, it slows the loading of the, the presentation of the page. We will use checkers like these and standards like these to do things like comply with the accessibility. Of it might be that your page displays correctly, but that it is worth checking through the World Wide Web Consortium validator anyway. So in conclusion, web pages are written in HTML. It's a file type that you can see at your file manager. You can edit the web pages in a plain text editor like Notepad++ and you constantly check how they look by returning from your editor to the browser. To make sure that they're written correctly, you nest the tags properly. That has plenty of advantages like being able to read the page more simply in your editor, to view its structure in the tools, and you can also check that your page is correct through validators like that of the World Wide Web Consortium. I hope you found this, this helpful. Thank you.